everyone welcome to the iron man experience a podcast about society art entertainment culture sports little bit of geopolitics and movies in today's episode i am going to talk to you about indian cinema now hold on you're thinking what what is so new about it well this is not for all you pandits and gurus and experts out there this is for those set of people who have never seen indian cinema before they're just stumbling upon it it's their first time seeing indian content or very recently it's for those set of people who think indian movies or indian cinema is only all about bollywood right so it's for those set of people the goal of this episode of or this series is to do some myth busting exercise update the cultural background and explain the geography a little bit idea is to provide a better reference to context so that people who are stumbling into indian cinema a don't get overwhelmed or underwhelmed don't get a wrong impression or have a misconceived perception or notion because that message then spreads further and, and frankly i haven't come across too many videos i'm sure once you dig in the internet on youtube there will be some but i haven't come across too many videos which specifically introduce indian cinema to say western audiences or global audiences and thanks to rrr and the golden globes and all that oscar buzz more and more people are trying to react to indian content and what i found was uh, they are struggling to understand some of the cultural nuances and references and i thought and it's a vast subject right and so can i just at least hi- highlight a few points right a few points so that if anybody is reacting or wishing to react to indian content then they can reference this video and um, and then uh, you know they will be better informed uh, and appreciate the movie better being a cinephile i'm not a analyst or film critic or anything but uh, being a cinephile it's my way of repaying it's like a gratitude right that you've derived so much of entertainment enjoyment over the years and now that you know the world ought to be aware and should have been aware by now given the fact that we produce 2000 odd films a year and been been around for almost 100 years the world should have been aware and uh, aware correctly but turns out it isn't you know some pockets know very well but largely they don't and so this episode it's a very simple no fancy graphics no nothing it's a storytelling this episode is a slow burn i mean my whole podcast is a slow burn podcast what i mean by slow burn is this does not have any rapid one two three kind of tips kind of thing right this is a very no frill basic heart to heart kind of a conversation trying to reach out one in a file trying to reach out to the other that's the long and short of it so if you this is something that floats your boat then sit back relax put on your headphones dim the lights and let's jump in to indian cinema 101 okay now with all the disclaimers done let me see how how do you begin how do you introduce the complexity the diversity of a country like india well let me break it down into at least three parts geography history and then the mathematics the reason i want to distribute it in these three parts is then you get the reference to context in the movie you understand the landscape you understand a little bit of history when i say history not just the country's history but from a cinematic standpoint the cinema history as well and when i say mathematics what i mean by is the return of investment part of it and all of these are interlinked in some way or the other so let me start with geography and this is like a very uh, high level simplistic so that you understand uh, we are talking about 3800 kilometers north and south about 2900 kilometers east to west that's the size of the country the there are 28 states you're talking about 16 languages at least uh, if you go to wikipedia they'll show 477 so i'm, I'm guessing 16 are the most spoken and then there are sub dialects 300 350 or more and so what this means essentially is that every single state has a different culture based on preferences belief systems understanding of life as it were largely speaking right so the, it's if if there ever was a headquarters for diversity india will certainly qualify as the number one if not the first one or two of them 
and, and so it's very evident when you travel the length and breadth of the country you will find the Himalayas which is very similar to say the Swiss Alps I'd imagine a little better <laughs> uh, but me being uh, the biased Indian that I am but um, yeah the, the Himalayas on, on the eastern side you have uh, desert the Rajasthan uh, desert on the uh, on the western side you come down you will find tropical forests and lush green uh, environments and then you have long coastal areas it's a, india is a peninsula so three sides uh, huge coastlines and so all of these have an impact on the landscape uh, these landscape have an impact on the storytelling the characters emerging and so on and so forth so now that you've understood the the geography let me take you through to the demography a little bit you're talking about a country which has got 1.4 billion people and counting of which 60% of the population is below the age of 30. Your average median age is 27, 28. In fact, the 20 odd percent are below the age of 20. So there's a huge young population as it were. And imagine folks like us who, you know, go to a pub or a, or a you know, restaurant, we find all these 20 something. So we are almost like ancient relics uh, and I'm dating myself. But just to give you an idea so the, the reflection of this is on the movies that you see so if there is this fan rotating slowly and the window going like this and this symbolism and the nuances and the subtlety and the subtext and the layers this 20 something watching the movie and, and I'm, I'm generalizing of course there are the sensitive and smart and all those things but by and large, right? The 20 something is full of energy, vibrancy. They would want to see something bright, pastels, loud, energetic. And, and so large part of the movie narratives probably reflect that. Because that's the movie going fraternity. That's the movie going audience, like large part of the audience. That is, it's not, in India, people, it's like a family outing, or it used to be, at least till pre pandemic. Um, but even in and, and the family outing therefore needed to be in those big blockbuster movies but by and large the young audiences visit and so therefore many movies cater to the sensibilities and so you know of, oftentimes I hear this word oh this is so over the top oh this is so spoon fed there's so much of exposition there's so much of simplicity well, if you're catering to a largely 20 something an audience, then subtlety, nuance and text, some subtext sometimes doesn't sit well. And so sometimes it has to be little in your face, very simplistic so that a large level of intelligentsia appreciates and absorbs it. And it's an incredibly difficult challenge for the filmmakers, the creators, the writers, the directors to uh, make a story which is uh, applicable to many. I mean, that's probably one of the differences between, say, Western cinema and Indian cinema. Western cinema probably picks up one genre and says, I want to make a cinema for this particular... I, this is a story I want to share and it will probably appeal to this section of the audience. In India, however, the general sentiment, and I, and I, this is my assumption, um, that they would rather cater to a larger section of the audience. You have a market of... 1.4 billion people even if you take away 400 million people who don't watch movies just saying you still have a billion people billion tickets even if they go see your movie one time <laughs> you probably won't need to make a movie again i'd imagine so there is this underlying intent to make a movie which appeals to cast the net wide to appeal to a larger audience and so this demo keeping this demography or uh, demographical uh, slice in mind is very important when you watch Indian movies. Who is it being made for? Who's your target audience? Who's the end consumer, right? So this is the demography. Cities play a major role up until say few years earlier, say up until say 2000 and, and broadly speaking, you would find many stories as has been the case. Think of Scarface where, the, where Al Pacino comes from say Cuba into the United States. There have been many similar storylines in India where the protagonist comes from a smaller city 
into a major city. So what are the major cities? You're talking about Mumbai, erstwhile uh, it used to be known as Bombay. Then you have Delhi, which is the capital of the country. And this is not in any hierarchy or anything. This is just, I'm, I'm just going through a circle. On the eastern side, you have Kolkata, uh, which is a, in itself has a huge and very rich, vibrant cinema culture. And then you have uh, Chennai, which is used to be the headquarters of, um, I would arguably say Indian cinema for a large part, you know, um, not just Tamil cinema, uh, which is uh, the predominant language there. But uh, then there are other cities which have emerged. You have uh, Hyderabad, if you are familiar with the IT landscape, you will understand that Hyderabad is a very big IT hub and a big financial district as well. Followed by, um, not followed by, people of Bangalore might uh, feel very offended by that. But uh, Bangalore and Hyderabad are very big IT hubs, as is Gurgaon, which is up north, which is next to Delhi. And so a lot of movies are being based or shot or the stories emerge from there. So earlier, the small town guy comes to a big city, big metropolis and, you know, explores life as it were. Nowadays, you see a lot of stories which are based in the small towns as it were. It's like a slice of life. Think of the actor, Mr. Ayushman Khurana. He's a genre unto himself, I would imagine. But those slice of life kind of stories are happening because people love to see this heartland stories which are very close to their culture and a large part of india resides in non-metropolis uh, big metropolitan cities and so these kind of stories appeal a lot and so you see that demography being represented uh, in in mainstream cinema and so now i, I just to summarize this right so in geography you, you understood the length and breadth of the country, you understood the number of languages, the diversity of cultures, the diversity of taste and preferences, you understood the demography, you know, what are the age groups and everything. And of course, we touched upon the main uh, centers. In this next segment, I'm going to go a little deeper and explain the film industries within these major cities. So that you get a better understanding and this probably will clarify this biggest misconception and if I can use the term misnomer that majority of the people who are not aware of Indian cinema in, in detail or in depth associate Indian cinema as quote unquote Bollywood which it is not. So let's find that out. <laughs> 